Today we will be listening to different overhead examples. Making drums is one of the things that a lot of people say they want to do, but sometimes they don't have the right approach or maybe there's something that they haven't wondered about. So you will be listening to the same two stereo techniques for overheads set up with four different adjustments. So let's see what you listen to. What difference did you notice? In this video, I'm going to make a couple of suggestions on how to fix some of the recording issues that they had, because these are the raw materials uh, for recording workshop that I gave a couple of weeks ago. And the two final takes are from the studio engineer and myself. So the challenge was kind of easy. They had to make up only the overheads of this drum kit and get most of the sound only from the overhead setup. <clears throat> they had to keep they had to pick the stand, the microphones. We had a nice mic selection to pick from. The studio engineer was <laughs> trying to explain to them how to listen for the drum sound, as I also did. And more or less, this was the setup of the first three takes where they tried to adjust it. We have an XY with some AKG, AKG 414, and we have some 121s ribbon mics on an open spaced pair. So you will always be listening first to the 121s and then you will be listening to the 414s. We all know that gain matching is really important, so let's focus on one at a time. This is going to be a really, really deep listening video, so try to get your best headphones, get nice and comfy in your speaker system, and I'm going to start trying to guide you around what we're listening for. So first of all, the issue was that they had to listen to the kick exactly in the center, and the snare either slightly to the right or right in the middle, because you can shift your overheads in a way that you can actually get right in the middle, the kick and the snare. In my reaper session, I have this volume gain made by Leapack by Leandro, <clears throat> that it has a mixer view availability. And I can just drag and it's one dB at a time. And that way I don't have like these big pulls and big pushes from the gain. So the whole point of it is to first try to gain match a bit the first one with the second one. And mainly the, dif the level difference that you are listening to has to do with many things. When you have a really closed stereo pair, like in the 414s, you will gain a lot more low end and lower mids because you have less of a phase issue relationship. Since the microphones are close together, the lower frequencies phase is less of an issue since the mics are closer together. When you have an open pair like the 121s, you will probably end up losing a lot more and since they are spaced enough, they usually give you a wider sound. So that's the main difference between the 121s and the 414s. So even if I'm only listening to the spaced AB, what you can do to try and figure out what's going on with the recording is try to figure out if when the kick drum hits, are you getting a straight line across the middle in this goniometer or are you getting a, a push on the sides? 
as you can see, most of the recording is pretty much out of phase. So let's try to invert the polarity of one of the channels, like just within the channel. Actually, that works a lot better. So remember that in Reaper, what you can do is like just do a big close up, double click the media item and invert the polarity, not the face of the media item. And it will visually shift without you having to shift the channel itself. And it will visually shift instead of having the channel shift. That way, in this case, since the microphones will be moving, I only have to adjust this one. And with the meter, we can really make sure that this is working. What you, can, what you are listening to now is a small difference where the kick is slightly to the left. And there's another free tool that you might want to try out. I will leave the link of this one in the description is the ADC stereoscope and you can just make it bigger so you can actually look at it a bit easier. So besides listening, let's try to help ourselves with some visual aid. This is a frequency stereo analyzer. So if there's too much of a frequency on one side, it's going to show on the left side. If it's to the right side, it's going to show on the right side. And if it's quite mono or quite in the center, it's going to show right in the middle. As you can see, it's really, really shifting to the left. I could either lower the volume of the left one a little bit so I don't get pulled so much towards the left side. Let's try that. And I'm going to keep on doing this until I feel that the kick is actually in the middle. The problem I have now is that the snare is actually really pushing towards the right side. So there's probably not too many ways to fix that right now without being too invasive with our signal. <clears throat> but yeah, that could be a way of trying to fix that one. And you could also find in most DAWs this other kind of stereo panning where you can only close the right channel and not lower the volume of the right channel and try to make the snare go into the left side. And that's a bit better, but it's still like a little bit on the side, you know? So those are like the main tricks that are we're going to try to use to solve all of the coming recordings. Let's try and listen how centered the image is. So what I'm going to try to do is lower up the gain of the left channel until I feel the kick is actually closer to the center. I think that, fe I think that feels a lot better. Let's check with the ergonometer and the ADC stereoscope. It's probably a bit to the right now, so I'm going to give it an extra dB. And the problem I'm having is that the snare is now going like really hard on this side. So you could try cycling between the pan modes inside your DAW 
all of the dots have some sort of dual mono panning where you can just track the right side into the left or the left into the right without just lowering the volume of the opposite side where you're panning. Or if you want like a really fancy solution, you could try and EQ a little bit this side, the right side, and cut a little bit of the snare so it actually matches that side. It, it's possible that you might get into some phase shifting issues. <clears throat> Let's try and listen to how centered the four 14s are. Okay, so I'm listening to pretty much the same problem, like the kick is a little bit to the left, and it's a really narrow image because when you have some really close capsules, you will probably end up having a narrower image, but you will have a better phase relationship in the low end. It's not as sensitive phase-wise. It could be easier to correct, since both of the capsules are capturing most of the instrument at pretty much the same place. If you're not sure where you should be pulling or pushing, you could try this. You could like really pull one of the faders and see where the image shifts and then bring it back up. In this case, I will be lowering the right side a little bit. In digital audio, I'm always pulling back, not pushing forward since I have a lot of space. I think those 2 dBs are more than enough. So after my students set up these two overheads, they had two teams of two, three people each, they listened to what was wrong, they reanalyzed the room, and then they tried to fix what they were listening to after I pointed out how when your mics are probably looking towards the corners, they could be also capturing a little bit of the accumulations of the low end of low frequencies that are going here. Also, the, the relationship of the height and the relationship to the side of the walls. That could also be influencing a lot of the frequency response that they are catching. So they shifted the microphones and now they got this result. So I tried to gain match it, it's not perfect, but it's as close as I could get. So let's listen again only to the 121's spaced perf. There's something horrible going on here because I can listen now to the kick drum on the right side. You can solo the right channel. And compare how much of a kick drum you have against the left channel. If you're having problems listening to it, try to also help with some visual aid. We had the ADC stereoscope. You can always try and load span. I'm loading it in the master track and I'm going to change the routing 
to dual mono i will have the left in green and i will have the right in that color that's kind of an orange not so orange color And as I said, you can see that the kick drum is actually pushing a bit more on the right side. So again, if I only pull with the gain, that's not going to work completely. I could try to EQ the differences from one side, maybe just loading an EQ on the right side and pulling a little bit of this until I find it's sounding closer to the center. But the big problem that you will have trying to fix it this way is that there is no way to actually fix the rest of the content of the kick drum inside of the overhead drums. Because the kick drum is not only the low end, it's the click of the drum plus all of its, all of its reflections from the side. So this is not going to be enough. It's going to fix a little bit, but you can still listen to that out of phase sound that whenever the kick drum hits, it's like ears are pushing in two different directions at the same time. So whenever you have like that strange pushing in opposite decisions on your ears, whenever one of the parts of the drums are hitting, you can like immediately go to the flip polarity button and fix it. Let's open the ADC. Let's check with span. I'm still having a little bit more on the right side, but it's no longer out of phase. Again, I can go in, I can double click one of the MIDI items and I can invert polarity, not phase, and go back out and shut this one down. So that works really, really good. And if you want to try and EQ the other side so it matches a little bit, probably it's going to work a little bit better now. Let's listen to the next 414s in XY. It's close enough, but I think it's not there. Let's double check. If you're using the stock goniometer, what you will be facing is that you have no way to zoom the gain into it. So you might want to try to cans goniometer because this one actually has scaling, visual scaling. And it is feeling better, but now it's kind of mono. It's not actually opening up. And this is really, really strange. Because how would you have to place these mics for everything to feel mono? Like that's really hard to do. You could try switching using this stereo pan mode, the left to the right channel. You can try soloing one. Then soloing the other side. And you will listen that you have pretty much the same information on both. And that's good and all, but that's not quite stereo. B 
because yes, we still have a little bit more on one side than the other. Let's go into the setup tree. For this fix, they only had five minutes. So let's go a little bit faster now. There is something really important going on here. You see how much of a level difference is going on? Remember that the height of your microphones related to the distance towards the drum has to do with the sensitivity and how much sound pressure is actually going to be converted into electricity and that's going to be transduced into your computer. So they are having an issue with the height because that's why you have some nice levels in the digital realm, but you have this really distant sound where I have to keep on pushing the clip gain until I feel it sounds a lot better. So on the first scenario, the 121s, now the kick drum is all the way on the left they actually didn't have enough time they messed it up and they said it like we have no idea what's going on we had no way to figure it out they tried lowering the level of the left side to maybe fix it but even if when you are kind of matching the levels the kick drum is not the same on both sides because they have a different distance that's not only direct sound but it's also early reflections and in the closed xy they actually got away from what they had achieved Because now what I'm listening is, I'm listening to the kick drum on the center, the hi-hats on the center, and the snare on the side. Like that, that's some, some magic miking right there. So then the studio engineer and myself did a small try to see if we could fix it in, in a really small time frame because that's actually studio time. Let's listen to what we did and then I'm going to explain how each one of us approached the problem. So what I did, as you listened already, is I got a much better sound from all of the kits. First of all, the whole issue was it really with the distance relationship from the drums and the upper wall, the back wall and the side wall. So I simply pushed down the microphones that gave me a much better drum sound, a much direct sound of the drums because you find people over compressing the overheads because they have early reflections and that's the best way to avoid it, like just go closer to the instrument. Again, my, ex my version of it. You can still listen to the room and like the ambience of the room, but you have a much better clear sound of the drums. The other thing that I did is I really took into account that this ribbon microphone was capturing the opening and the closing of the hi-hat this small crash right here and it will even cover the tom the air tom that's over here there's not it's going to get in through any way possible because it's a snare drum and this one is actually over the right symbol and the low tom And if we check with the goniometer and the stereoscope, you 
you will see that it's actually shifting a lot towards the middle. But remember that going completely one means that you're mono. Being around this zone is closer to an actual stereo signal. Okay. And even if I check with span, I would have to still check a little bit up the low end, but I think it sounds a lot better now. And let's check the Studio Engineer version of it. I think the balance is also good enough, but I'm, my problem is that you're getting too much of the ambience in the room. So <clears throat> maybe just, just micing some overhead sounds like an easy job, but maybe it's not as easy as it seems. There are a lot of things to take into account. My students had like this laser thing and they had cables and they could do anything they wanted to actually make the sound stick in the middle. And we tried to force ourselves into just adding it out without using too many tools. Before ending this video, I want to show you a couple of extra room mics that I added. This is not a really big room. So I have this, uh, microphones from 12 gauge. This is the 50 gauge that I think they are not longer being made. And I have a closer version of the rooms with something that's closer to a Jacqueline disc with also 12 gauge microphones. These are cardioids, cardioids, both condensers. If you don't know what a Jacqueline disc is, you can build it yourself. You can use a mic stand or whatever you have at hand. The only thing is that you have to have something that splits two microphones in the middle and acts as a certain amount of mass, just like the head. This gives a different sensation of the opening of the stereo image. You can open them a little bit and you can apply any of the techniques that you know of the stereo making techniques. I will leave linked in the description the audio university video on the stereo making techniques so you can learn everything about them. So what I did, because I didn't have a Jacqueline disc, is I used <laughs> a case of a microphone and I filled it up with stuff and I covered a little bit with a rock so I didn't have too many reflections and I placed the mics closer and a little bit open. So with those two extra mics, I have the blue ones that are closer and the pink ones that are further away. So for this example, we added a mic drum and the ambience room drums. So let's listen again to the false Jacqueline and the open AB. Let's listen to them again against the drums. Okay, so that's a nice tour on how to listen to overhead microphones. I think that should leave you something to think about. Uh, this session will be available on my Gumroad for free download so you can listen to the examples yourself. I have forgotten about this. This is a group that took the workshop. Rodrigo is the engineer at the studio. It's The studio name is La Zorra, down at Condesa in Mexico City. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, share, and all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.